Hey guys, welcome back to your Florida electrician. We're here today to install an Emporia EV charger. You can get uh, up to 48 amps with this charger for your vehicle. We're going to do an unboxing of this today. We're going to install it on an outside wall coming off a GE panel here. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the, the unboxing part. I'm being told there's not a whole lot of videos out there for this particular charger. So I was invited by Nakita. He was kind enough to let us come over and install this charger for him and make a video. Uh, very happy to do that right now. Get this open carefully. I don't know what's under the hood. This is my first one for Emporia. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. So we have the instruction manual, owner's manual. It looks like they also have a, like a sense type of thing on the inside. All right, of course we have the charger itself right there, packed nice. Let's take that out very carefully. Well, it's packed really good. Let's see what's under the hood here. Okay, we got the screw package. And the rest of this should come out fairly easily. Woo! Big heavy cable. The charging head. And a charger head mount. And that should be a 20 foot cable, so that should be more than enough to reach. Uh, Nikita had mentioned that he would like this particular charger hardwired. We're not going to put the NEMA 1450 in. We're going to hardwire this directly into the outside panel here using some uh, liquid tight non-metallic flexible conduit. Uh, it should be a pretty simple install, um, but we are going to remove this and install the flexible conduit. So let's get into it. I do want to get into the electrical panel. Guys, if you're going to be working with the electrical and you're not sure at all or not 100% confident with what you're doing, don't do it. Don't get hurt. Have somebody else do it. Um, but today's should be pretty straightforward. So we need to get into this GE panel here. It's the outdoor panel. It's what we call the MSP, the main service panel. Carefully lift this off because this is energized. And we have a spot for our 60 amp. That's the maximum you can do with this one. It should pop right in there. We can put it on the bottom or put it on the top, but carefully, carefully, it needs to go in there. You don't want to slip because you can get a shock. It's off fit right in there. Afterwards, we got to pop out the panel blanks. Um, but we need to get into this panel very carefully. These are your line side coming off the meter. We got to be very careful. I don't want to hit any of these. So I'm going to be very careful to knock out one of these uh, three quarter inch, probably this outside one. And then we'll run the flex under here over to where we discussed where we're going to install it right here. So let's get that three quarter inch knockout. This is pretty easy, but again, you got to be careful. Be mindful of the live wires here. You don't want to hit them with anything sharp. Doesn't take much. This is all live too. You don't want to take a screwdriver across there. It's going to blow up in your face and it's not going to be a good day. I trust the old school Kleins. There's the three quarter. I am going to use probably a 90 connector right here and we'll bring that underneath the, the meter. I don't think I want to do that yet until I run the wires in there. All right, let's figure out where we're going to hang this thing. So we're going to take the mounting bracket off first. There is only four screws holding the mounting bracket off. You just need a Phillips screwdriver. We'll go ahead and take those off. Hopefully not lose them.
So we have the eight screws in the back uh, that they provide an Allen key for to take off the front cover of this Emporia EV charger. Uh, good thing they provide the Allen key because I didn't happen to have one today. So luckily they have it. I want to be very careful not to drop these screws, but there is eight of them. Boy. All right, we got the eight screws out. And now in the directions, they say be very careful because we have a cable connected to the front for the lights, which I see it there. I don't think I even have to remove it, but it's a little pin connector. If you do take it out, you want to be super careful. And usually they pop right out, but yep, it's not popping out, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, all right, so we want to hardwire this. I need to take off this NEMA 50 plug. Um, in here, you can see where we are connected. There's a bunch of connections in here. This set on the left is the one I want to remove. We're going to go ahead and take a regular screwdriver and unplug that, a flat screwdriver. That's what I mean by regular. We're going to loosen that. I need a smaller one. We're going to loosen these connections here. That's good. They got them nice and tight. There's only three, a black, a red, and a green. Take those off. And then there's a little clamp. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little clamp here holding the wire in. That uses a small Phillips. We need to loosen that to be able to get the cable out. There's another connector here. It's a big one. You got to loosen this. That's holding that big wire in place so it doesn't move as well. Take that off and we should be able to carefully take this wire out. And boom, that is out of here. Cable's gone. Let's make that go bye-bye. You don't need that for anything, do you? <laughs> All right, let's take the rest of this connector off. Because I believe I need to put some reducers in here. If I read correctly, this is an inch and a quarter strain relief. I'm going to be using a three quarter. So I picked up a couple reducing washers from inch and a quarter down to one inch from one inch down to three quarter so we'd be utilizing these to reduce that opening down to three quarters what I need it actually looks like it's one inch but that's all I need really I don't need the inch and a quarter these reducers will bring them down to three quarter inch so my flex will fit and hopefully that slides in over there, which it will. Oh, good. That's good. Excellent. So with that, I can put my three quarter inch connector. That should fit in there perfectly. One goes on the outside with the recess. There's a indent here. We want that to be poking up into the EV charger. And the other one, I don't know if you can see it, but it has another recess. We want that poking down. And then we want to put the nut back on the three quarter inch connector. So that'll hold everything in place. So that's ready to go as far as that goes. I do want to remove this though. You think it's safe to remove that? <laughs> All right, so we're able to disconnect the face of this thing very carefully the connector comes out apparently um, I would be very very careful with this at this point we are probably going to hang 
the mount on the wall. That'll give me an idea of where the EV charger will go and how much flex I'm going to need. Um, we've decided to go ahead and put the wires in after that. Put the flex in there with the measured flex and leave extra wire for getting into the panel because I believe trying to put these eight screws back in while it's up on the wall is really going to be difficult. So I'd like to get the wires in here first. Go ahead and tighten them down. Um, go ahead and put that back on and, uh, and then go ahead and put it up. The only, the only downfall about that is I'm not going to be able to test the voltage unless I test it through the handle here. Um, so that, that's the only challenge of that. But I don't think with this design, having the eight screws coming from the back is going to be very easy. Even with the Allen screw, it's going to take forever with the Allen wrench. Um, so we're going to do this way instead. We'll put the mountain bracket up um, and then we'll go ahead and wire this thing with the flex adjusted. Um, stick the wires in and then go ahead and put it up. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and do that. We'll get some marks going. I think we decided somewhere around here. Super hot out here. <laughs> Cool. Now we got that. We want to measure with the flex. Jet two on the ground over here. Get kind of a rough idea where we're going to go with the flex. I can make simple adjustments to it later. So roughly like that. Stay there. Over to here. I don't want to cut that. Push these wires through. Number six wire. It's a little bit heavier, a little hard to work with, but if you want to get 60 amps out of it, it's what we need. No neutral needed. <laughs> I think I cut that the other day. And uh, I'm like, why did I do that? So it's been with me ever since. Good eye, sir. And that would have made it a lot tighter for sure. Okay, we don't need more than that inside the EV charger. So, we certainly don't need a neutral. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. We can go ahead and feed these in. I do want to take, what is that little cap that goes on there? Oh, this one just turns. Okay. I'm gonna feed these in carefully. It's nice when your videographer is an engineer can point out the obvious. <laughs> and this one just kind of turns in. Kind of crazy. And then we want to cut and or push out and make these connections here. Maybe I'll push these out. Yep. Yeah, I can push them and connect them. Cool. So the one on the outside will be the black. The next one is the red and the one next to the ground here will be the ground. So we'll go ahead and cut those, strip them and cut them. Want my black first. Uh, 
probably going to be at least a half inch. Use 6AWG90C copper wire. That's what it says right inside. All right, so the wires are all landed in here. I think you can see them okay. We've got the black, the red, and the green. And I put this back. It's not really gonna do anything with these wires, but it can't hurt in case the homeowner ever decided to go back. Um, we have the hardware there. And I was gonna close this up because I believe it's gonna be much, much easier to go ahead and put the eight screws back in than it would be to hang it on the wall and then try to get behind it with the Allen key with eight screws and, and washers and stuff. So I just want to close it up now and uh, we'll hang it on the wall and we'll fish the wires into the electrical panel. Whoop. Remember, if you put the cover back on, plug it back in. <laughs> it probably will be a problem. And I'm sure there's a certain direction this has to go. Snap back in, it's good. You definitely don't want to be all charged up and plugging that back in. Make sure you're you're grounded or you grounded yourself because um, electronics doesn't like static electricity. You could fry it before you even get to use it. And now uh, once we get this cover lined back up, off we go. Oh, there's a little line, there's a little alignment tabs. Oh, good to know. There's uh there's little alignment tabs on the side there on both sides and the screw holes definitely don't line up without having those alignment tabs in if you can see them they're very small there's three on each side maybe there's one on the top yeah there's one on each on the bottom and top nice make sure those are lined up or your screws don't line up i'm trying to be careful with the face and uh yeah we'll start putting these back in probably skip this <laughs> All right, we got our flex in there, wired up. We have our, our uh, what is this thing called? The connector for the car laying on the ground. I don't want to mess with the head unit there. I don't want to break anything. So we laid it out already. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on the wall. Make sure everything lines up. Hold it there. Get my screw, my screwdriver. This one only has four screws. Put one screw in there. She's up on the wall, looking good. I think I'm gonna run the electrical, the wiring behind. I got a lot of extra wire here. Maybe I need it, maybe not, but I'm gonna keep it for the moment. Run that behind here. I'm gonna run that behind the meter like we showed before. I'm not putting the connector on yet because that'll be really hard to get behind the meter. And we're gonna figure out the strapping here pretty soon. Okay, and we wanted to get this into here, into this knockout. I got a 90 connector. I love them and I hate them, but I'm going to measure how much wire I actually need. I don't need more than this. This will get into the panel. Instead of feeding all this extra, I'm going to cut it a little bit long. And then run the connector, run the wires through the connector, which on a 90 is always fun. Started nice. There we go. And 
maybe one at a time. There we go. All right, it's liking one at a time much better. Oh. And this is the same as the other one. You need to get it in and, and twist it. Probably at least once around. Without putting that into the panel. Okay. Almost there. Carefully feed these into the panel. Remember it's live. Carefully without scratching the wires. Okay, and then we have our lock nut. Keep those wires under control. You don't want them hitting anything. The lock nut. Nice. If the lock nut goes on really difficult, it's probably cross threading. So you want it to be able to go on pretty easily. And then again, my old school clines, my beater. I want to tighten this up. Nice and tight. Wires under control. We can go ahead and strap some of this. Hopefully we get it where it can look somewhat good. Oh yeah. Yep, that should be good like that. We'll get a couple straps on there. Looking good. Oh, I need at least two. I want to keep this up like that. Nice. There's one. Boop, 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 boop. One more there. Just keep it from getting tugged on by anybody. actually like doing this it's a drip loop when it does rain it's not going to go into the panel it's not going to be let into here it'll just drip off the end here looks a little funky but cool try to protect that as long as I can boss <laughs> so now we need to connect it to power Again, very, very, super, very carefully. Uh, this panel is bonded, so there's no separate ground bar, a neutral bar. I don't know if you can see up here, but we have a ground and a neutral on the same bar. These ones are hot. You want to be super careful with those. But this will need to go up to here. One of these ground screws. It's usually tricky to get them in there because this is number six. And you can't really see it, but some holes are bigger than the others. Uh, the top one is pretty small. The next one down is pretty big. Probably designed for this wire, number six. All these other ones, 
are pretty small. So we definitely want to stick this up on that second one down. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that a little bit. I do have some hot screwdrivers. And what do I mean by hot screwdrivers? These are insulated for up to a thousand volts. So if I do make a boo-boo and touch something, we're going to be okay. It's not going to transfer from the panel to me. I want to cut this to length. Again, being super careful and mindful what you're doing. If you want to do this live for yourself, you got to be careful. This stuff doesn't care who you are. If you're a nice person, bad person, it doesn't care. So I put a little pre-bend on it. So when I let it go, it kind of goes whoop into the, into the hole, hopefully, if I did it right. There you go. Just kind of twist itself right into the hole. Tighten it up. Okay. And then we have our two huts. I want to loosen the lugs a little bit. Sometimes coming from Home Depot or whatever, these GE especially, I don't know what a machine does it or something, but they put it so tight. Uh, sometimes you can't even get the, you can't even loosen them. So you end up stripping it out. Pisses me off. I go back to Home Depot and complain about it. Uh, but I think they have a machine that tightens them at the factory. All I know is it's super hard to get, to get it off of there. It seems to only be GE. Strip it. You only need maybe three eighths of an inch, if that, to get that landed properly under the breaker. Again, a little bit of a twist so you can get behind behind that lug. If you really need to, you can take the breaker out. <clears throat> I want to make sure I'm behind the lug. That's the hard part. Okay. Tighten it good and then do a tug test. If you missed it, it'll pop right out of there. It's easy to miss. We always try to find, uh, try to follow a certain format, black, red, black, red, um, for anybody that does any kind of metering in a panel. It's usually nice to have everything conform to that method, black, red, black, red. Lines do matter when it comes to metering. If you're not going to meter, don't worry about it. If you're going to meter later, start now. Get everything black, red, black, red. Make it easier later. Okay. Tug test. It's in there. These are not electrical gloves. These are just gloves to keep me from getting cuts. If you want to feel safer, you need to get real electrical gloves. This will not protect me from the electrical shock. And we're in, which means we can start commissioning. Okay, now we're going to log into the Emporia app. We're going to click on the login and then do our login. And we'll come back and do the commissioning. Okay, we got logged in. Now it asks you to choose the Emporia Energy product you'd like to set up. And I believe it would be the Emporia EV Charger. Second one down. And if you've already installed your EV Charger using the inbox installation guide, you're ready to go directly to setup. If you haven't installed your Emporia Charger, choose to go, to, go through an in-app installation guide below to get started with your install. We wanna go directly to setup uh emporia energy would like to use your bluetooth yes so we need to stand with it let's see tap the number that corresponds to the six digit of the device found on the side of the charger so i imagine we have to turn it on first the breaker and it's probably gonna go through a light setup yep that's good so we have power all right so we got this thing booting up power Wi-Fi, it's probably blinking Wi-Fi because it doesn't have Wi-Fi set up. Son of a! 
All right, so it's booting up. Uh, we have power and the Wi-Fi is blinking, probably because we didn't input any Wi-Fi yet and we have no power and there's no exclamation point yet either. So that's good. So let's get back to the app. Okay. Oh, here we go. It's here. So it just, it just popped up. I see the last six digits popped up on the Wi-Fi screen. We'll click on that, connect a new device, scanning available networks. At this point, we're going to find the network. This may take several minutes. Um, yep, I'm going to choose the network here, and we may have to blur out this section. Yeah, definitely after. But thank you for the water. Welcome. Connecting to the Emporia Energy Cloud. Well, that's good. This may take a minute. I don't know if I'll even have a chance to upload it and work on this at all tonight. We'll see. Honey, it's getting a Rivian. Huh? It's getting a Rivian. We're going to go for a ride in a Rivian. That's awesome. There we go. Enter a name for your EV charger and select its time zone and breaker amperage. That's... All you, sir. <laughs> See, I have like that too. Oh, the potting. Mm. Oh, yes. you have an extra. Yeah, oh. you have to change. Yeah, I will after. Yeah. 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 All done. To charge your vehicle, open the port door and plug the EV charger gun into the port. You will see charger light on the EV charger switch to solid blue when it is connected to the vehicle. It will begin breathing blue as the vehicle charges. Additionally, most EVs have an indicator light on the dashboard to let you know that you're charging. Do not attempt to drive your vehicle while the charge cable is connected to your vehicle. Ensure your vehicle has stopped charging before you remove the charging cable adapter from the charge port. Cool, and then it's gonna give you uh, an interface of some sort or whatever. So let's see how we set the average. Oh, it didn't do it, huh? Okay. Graphics. I thought it did. Let's see. We can try an Emporia plug. Units of measure. Uh, let's go right through it. We want watts, currency, amps. Okay. Amps, obviously. We want amps. Uh, safe Good. management, maybe? Oh, yeah. Where's that? Bottom management. Time of use. Peak demand management, access, uh, excess solar management. Oh, nice. Saving opportunity, graphs, home. Let's go back to home. Got to be somewhere else. There we go. Uh, charge rate. Charge rate. Oh, it's on 40 by default. Homeowner would like to see this at. Why is it still on 40? Yeah. Great question. <laughs> what? It better do 60. Really? really? No. 6 to 40? Yeah, it has to be somewhere at the beginning of the commissioning. We must have missed it. Oh, see, so you can share it. See, there yeah, was a way yep. so you can share it. There you go, right there. We want the down arrow to go to 60. There you go. Nice. Yep. Cable is rated for 40 amps. Ooh. Right. That's a pretty that's solid. The 40. Okay. So acknowledge. So that's a good one. So you got to go into Rivian Charger Info and then change it to 60 amps because they're warning you that that uh, cable for the 1450 is only rated for 40 amps. So we took out, we took out that cable and we put six wire in there so we can rate that at 60 amps so awesome man so let me find the adapter and we'll try it wait we got a commission um we got it kind of wrapped on the wall here a little bit uh we've decided to put the 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 hook here for the connector and we're going to go ahead and mount that it should be fairly straightforward we already made some marks i think i'm going to move this out of the way because i don't want to get it dirty or full of drywall dust or um, concrete dust
Now the fun part. Let's plug it in. I got my Tesla adapter on here. We're going to plug it in. And then we should probably look on the app. <laughs> or look on the car windshield. I don't have it set to charge yet. <clears throat> charging equipment not ready. See instructions. So we're going to have to tell it to start charging. Probably on... Probably on your... On the app. So if you go into your app and tell it to start charging... Let's see, where do we go? Oh, neat, here's your history. Okay. Ready. Okay, wait. Pausing, okay. Tap, tap to charge now. Okay, getting ready. Charging. go go ahead and take a look at the screen we're charging let's see what the rates at let's go ahead and change the screen to charging let me see charging it doesn't tell me 59 percent that's the charging screen but it is charging i don't know what oh right here here it is at 11 kilowatt 48 amps Charge limit 80%. So we're charging at 12 kilowatt. Wow. What? Yeah, 11 kilowatt. Yeah, 11 now. So what we are charging, it says uh, an hour and 30 minutes to get from the 59% we're at now to the charge limit of 80. Very nice. That's very nice. Yep, very good. Woohoo! Well, if I sit here for another hour and a half, I get a free charge. Sample interface. Well, that's it. Here we are. The Emporia charge tested, batteries installed, labeled. Uh, it was doing the full 48 amps, doing 11,000 watts. Happy customer. Happy your Florida electrician. And hopefully this helps you uh, seeing this install. Um, if it hasn't, or there's something else you'd like to see or have questions about, please leave, leave some comments uh, for us. At least four words from what I understand. Um, ask me anything about it. Uh, if I can't answer it, maybe the homeowner can. So <laughs> he is an engineer. So, <laughs> all right. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching.